We grew up in a home with a lot of interest in social activism, being part of the community, and a steady diet of uh, National Geographic and Reader's Digest. You know, for my mom, I think as immigrants, they always want their kids to aspire to something, and I think for her, medicine was a noble thing. If there's one thing that sort of captures kind of the essence of the influence that, you know, she had on us was the, the idea of the sky's the limit. So I should always say that. I ended up graduating from high school early and I started university when I was 16. I was looking through my courses for my next semester and I came across this guy, Ken Norwich, and he had an MD and a PhD. And I thought, oh my God, it's like, you know, you can be an MD and you can take care of people and you can be a PhD and you know everything about everything. It's like, oh my God, this is what I want to do. For me, scientifically, it kind of started to develop when I was in my early teens was the idea that epilepsy was sort of this different state of the brain. and. And if I could understand epilepsy, then I could understand the brain. I think as a surgeon, particularly in the context of epilepsy, the hope is that, that surgery then will help them with the rest of their life. Adjustment for epilepsy patients is very difficult because imagine living with something for a good part of your life and then not having it. And what does life look like? So some people actually don't adjust at all to that kind of state. In many ways, I think that that surgery is just a tiny fraction in the care that you can afford somebody. The work we've done in the community to try to create, you know, better resources. My lab's taken it up and, you know, it's really, it's great to watch them now sort of independently drive the outreach at the lab. They put on the Purple Day and the Atrium. They're out doing a walk for epilepsy. I think it's important that, especially in medicine, and research is not to abstract yourself too far from the very people that you're trying to figure stuff out from. The brain is vast, the brain is complex, and I think that mystery is, is just even heightened further when you're a neuroscientist because you want to kind of crack that code.